Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and this is the Magicycle Cruiser. It's an affordable electric fat bike with a 750 watt rear hub motor that is designed to compete with some of the big names in the electric fat bike space. Can it stack up though? We're gonna put it to the test today and find out. The Magicycle Cruiser is built around a 750 watt rear hub motor that's made by Shinji. It makes 86 newton meters of torque and it's powered by a 52 volt, 15 amp hour battery that's blended into the frame that makes for around a total of 780 watt hours of energy, which is slightly above average of the battery size we see in the affordable electric fat bike category. You're also getting a mixed Shimano drivetrain with a Torni shifter and a Altus seven speed rear derailleur. It's a fairly standard issue setup, especially at the sub $2,000 electric fat bike category. You also have a set of unbranded mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. Now we'll dive a little bit more into the performance of the brakes later, but they have not quite stood up to what I would consider good braking performance for an electric fat bike or really any e-bike to be honest. Um, aside from that, you've got a fairly standard setup for an affordable electric fat bike. You've got a nice looking frame, you've got a comfort saddle, you've got some riser mountain bike style handlebars, a twist throttle, a decent color LCD display, a rear rack in the back that's rated for about 50 pounds of cargo. And overall, it's, it's fairly standard issue. It is definitely positioned to try and compete with the Rad Powers and the Aventins and even the Sondors of the world. They're at least making a good attempt. But while this bike on paper is very standard, there was many things around its performance that I would not call standard. In fact, I would almost call them concerning. The first of which is the bike's speed. Now this bike is marketed as a class three electric fat bike, the type of electric fat bike that you're gonna see very commonly on crowded bike paths and in areas where there's lots of different pedestrians. But while this thing is claimed to be a class three e-bike, this bike, which is a production model, I will note, showed up at our office as a fully unlocked model. That means the throttle is capable of far more than 20 miles an hour, and even the pedal assistance is capable of more than 28 miles an hour. That is concerning, and frankly, it is immediately a red flag for our reviewing staff when we do have one of these bikes show up at our office fully unlocked, because that is then putting the onus on you, the consumer, to then go and pare down the bike speed for your local regulations. It's not even trying to follow the US speed regulations. On top of that, as I mentioned before, is this bike's braking performance. Now we're gonna dive into that a little bit more in the brake test section of this review, but frankly, these unbranded mechanical disc brakes are subpar for this bike's weight, its speed, and its overall capabilities. It leaves us desiring a lot more. Magicycle has responded in kind to some of our concerns, which we have raised to them, and they have responded by saying that this bike will no longer be specced with unbranded mechanical disc brakes and instead come with a set of Tektros. Those Tektro brakes should improve braking performance, but our policy at Electric Bike Report is to always test bikes as consumer models, as they're shipped to us, as if we were you at home. We wanna know how this bike would perform if we just unboxed it as the average consumer. So we didn't put those new Tektro brakes on, even though they did send them to us, mostly because we can't guarantee that you're going to get them if you order this bike. It wouldn't be the first time that an e-bike company has tried to juice its results by giving us something that is not consumer spec. And then lastly, and this is not related to the performance of the bike, we actually had a competitor to this company, another big name in the affordable electric fat bike space, reach out to us during the course of our testing of the Magicycle, and they raised some concerns over how Magicycle was conducting business. Pointedly, they pointed towards Magicycle's website and said that they had 
fairly blatantly plagiarized this other competitor's website. We've confirmed that. We went in and found photos, product descriptions, website copy, even the design of the pages was directly taken from another brand. Now again, that is not related directly to performance or how this bike rides in the real world, but it is something that I know that if I were on the other side of this screen and I was the one who was trying to decide what company I wanted to spend my money with, that's information that I would like to know. It's, it's reflective of the company's business practices and, and how they're approaching this space. So food for thought, absolutely, on if you are considering the Magicycle Cruiser and some big notes on how it's performed in our testing. But without further ado, let's dive into the testing and see how it performs. So to test the Magicycle's cruisers larger than average in this category, 780 watt hour battery, again, that's a 52 volt, 15 amp hour unit that's blended into the frame here. We put it through two different range tests. The first on PAS2 to get an idea of how far the bike can go if you chose to use a low pedal assist level and conserve energy. And then we did it on PAS5 to see how fast and how far you could go. So on that PAS5 test, we went for 28.32 miles. And the PAS2 test, we went for 6 60.13. Both of those are fairly standard ranges, especially in this category, and really among affordable electric bikes in general. It seems like 672 watt hours is kind of the industry norm where we see a lot of this bike's competitors specking their batteries. In the 780 watt hour unit, we didn't see really that big of an improvement. So really just kind of average results, good results from the Magicycle Cruiser and the range test category. So let's move on to the next test and see how it performs there. It is hard to undervalue the importance of good braking performance for an electric fat bike. And that's because these bikes are typically on the heavier end of the spectrum. They're also typically very fast. The Magicycle Cruiser is no exception. This bike is not light and it's capable of very, very high average speeds. But unfortunately, the unbranded mechanical disc brakes that come on this bike have given us issues from day one. These brakes, they have no branded. We don't know who made them and they have 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. That's a fairly standard setup for mechanical disc brakes, but on this bike, they just have not been able to match the high speeds and high weight of the bike, giving us very long stopping distances. Now we're about to put this bike through our braking test where we bring it up to 20 miles an hour and slam on the brakes as hard as possible five times to get an average stopping distance. But know while watching this video, that this is actually the fourth time we've done this test on this bike. And each time we've gotten results that have left us with more questions than answered. And we've also tried to work on these brakes, service them, bring the bike into the shop to get it as good braking performance as possible. But we're gonna test it again one more time on camera to see how it performs. The Magicycle Cruiser did not perform particularly well in this round of brake testing. In fact, I'd almost describe it as it performed concerningly poorly. It came to an average stopping distance of 28 feet, nine inches, which is almost double the average stopping distance of all the bikes we've put through the brake test so far of 15 feet, eight inches. That's concerning. I, there's no really good way to put it. That is a very long average stopping distance, especially considering how quick this bike goes and the fact it's in a category of e-bike designed to go into high traffic pedestrian areas such as bike paths and city streets and things like that. You want a bike that's going to stop quicker than that. There's a couple points of context I want to add. As we've put this bike through its testing, we noticed its braking problems. We did contact Magicycle and their response was that they were no longer going to put these unbranded mechanical disc brakes on this bike 
like, and they're going to instead be specking them with a slightly more aggressive Tektro mechanical disc brake. They even sent us a set of these mechanical disc brakes. But our policy at Electric Bike Report is to always review the consumer spec models of the bikes as we received them, which is why we've continued the testing with these unbranded brakes, because we know that Magicycle was shipping these bikes with this brake set, not those Tektro brakes. And we can't guarantee that you are going to get a set of Tektro brakes if you do order a Magicycle. Again, we got unbranded ones and this is how they performed. So this is food for thought. If you are considering this bike, the braking performance on so the Magicycle Cruiser comes with a 750 watt rear hub motor that's made by a company called Shinji. It makes 86 newton meters of torque and it's a fairly good motor. It's also fairly standard, again, of what you would expect from an electric fat bike. 750 watts really does seem to be the industry norm for these affordable models. Uh, one thing that is unique about this though is that while most bikes come with five pedal assist levels, this bike is spec stock with seven. That is probably something that can be changed in the settings, but it is a unique feature of this bike. And to get an idea of how that this bike performs in each of those seven pedal assist levels, we took it around our electric bike report circuit and found that you do indeed get a nice and measured increase in power between each of the pedal assist levels. Do you need seven? That's probably up for you to decide. I personally usually prefer less. And again, that's something you can probably change in the settings. But diving in a little bit more about one of our big concerns about this bike is generally just how fast it is is we always take the positions that electric bikes need to be shipped to consumers following to the best of the company's abilities U.S. law on e-bike speed and power. This bike did not do that. It showed up to our offices fully unlocked, capable of faster than 28 miles an hour on pedal assist and faster than 20 miles an hour on the throttle. Again, this is something that can likely be changed in the settings. In fact, Magicycle did send us instructions on how to do that. We did change the settings. It's kind of a convoluted process, but it is there. Our position as Electric Bike Report is that these bikes always need to ship in the legal limits. That way it's the onus is not placed on the consumer. They are not forced to go through this convoluted process. And it is very likely that consumers that are buying these bikes are unaware of e-bike law. So it needs to be on the company's shoulders to make sure that they are following the law and doing the best of their ability to deliver a safe model. The reason why speed is such a big sticking point, especially for me personally, is that this electric fat bike, like all of the electric fat bikes in its category, are really going to see the most usage in high areas with high pedestrian traffic. We're talking little kids running around, parents pushing strollers, people walking dogs, people just going on a walk with AirPods in their ears and they may not be able to hear you. Speed is a factor and as electric bikes become more pervasive on things like bike paths and rail to trails, or excuse me, rail to trails trails, we're going to see more conflict between the different user groups. And the faster these bikes go, the more dangerous they can be, and the more conflict we're going to see, which may even mean less access. It's a big, I'm going off on a tangent here about speed, but it's an important thing to consider and one of our big sticking points about the Magicycle Cruiser. In the cockpit and handling department, the Magicycle Cruiser is fairly standard issue of what we would expect from an affordable electric fat bike. You've got a set of flat riser style handlebars with a twist throttle on the right hand side, some faux leather grips that are stitched for kind of aesthetic looks, and then just generally a very normal cockpit experience for an affordable electric fat bike. The handling is also as advertised. It's very balanced, it handles its speed nicely, it even feels good in corners. I would almost go as far as to call it confidence inspiring at higher speeds. And then even on gravel roads like the one that we're here at right now, it seems to handle this very well. Those fat bike tires have a good amount of grip. It's got a suspension fork in the front end to help dampen some of the vibrations you may have come across. All around for cockpit and handling, it's a good performing e-bike. 
So to get an idea of how the Magisec Cruiser goes uphill, we brought it out to our test hill hell hole. We're gonna put it through two separate climbing tests. The first using just the throttle and the second on pedal assist level seven, which is the highest pedal assist level. And this hill is a third of a mile long. It's got a 12% gradient on average. So plenty steep and plenty long to put this 750 watt rear hub motor to the test. But I have very little concern over how well this bike is going to do. Not only does it have that 750 50 watt rear hub motor. It makes 86 newton meters of torque and it's also got the added benefit of a 52 volt battery which is going to give the motor just a little bit extra juice to work with. So let's put it to the test and see how it goes. All right. So this is the throttle only hill test of the Magicycle Cruiser. I have pretty much all the faith in the world that it is going to just fine. Six newton meters of torque, which is definitely coming into play here on this fairly steep section of hill. Already noticing just a generally higher speed right now than what we see on a lot of throttle only tests. Just going to gain some speed for this flat section. As we suspected, the Magicycle did just fine on our test hill hell hole, actually putting up pretty good times. In the throttle only test, it made it to the top in one minute and 15 seconds with an average speed of 14.5 miles an hour. And then in the PAS 7 test, it made it to the top in one minute, six seconds with an average speed of 16.4 miles an hour. Really great results, but not unexpected results. So climbing is definitely a high point for the Magicycle Cruiser. It's a very good bike uphill. 
As electric bikes have boomed in popularity over the past several years, especially in the affordable side of the market, people like me, people who comment on the industry, have called it the Wild West. And in a lot of ways, I think that is a very apt way to describe what's been happening over the past several years. And that's because consumers are just flooding the market with money and interest and the desire to buy affordable electric bikes that aren't gonna break the bank and are still gonna be very fun. And because of that, it seems like everybody has been wanting to get in on the action and make an e-bike company and push those products out and have a nice payday. But over the past several years, it has seemed like some of those companies have been around long enough to start to differentiate themselves from those kind of Wild West companies that are just trying to make a quick buck. These companies are building bikes that are well engineered, they're thought out, safety is a priority, they're delivered to your door, ready to go, and they're going to be legal. You're never going to have to worry about whether or not your bike is allowed on this bike path or not because the company has shipped it to you exactly ready to go and they've also chosen components that they know is safe and they know that because they actually ride their bikes they actually spend time on them they enjoy them and they understand why people are buying them I do not know that I can say that Magicycle falls into that category. I think they may be more in the Wild West, here to make a buck category. There are a lot of concerns that we've popped up over the Magicycle Cruiser's performance over the course of our review process. The big ones being the speed, the fact that this bike showed up to our office unlocked, able to go as fast as the motor could push on throttle and pedal assistance. And then the braking performance, which for a bike that weighs a lot and has those really high speeds, the very poor performing on here are a huge safety concern, especially when you consider that this bike is going to be used most often on things like bike paths and crowded urban areas, places where you're going to have a lot of interaction with other user groups, such as dog walkers, people pushing strollers, people that are not going to be expecting a bike passing them at 30 miles an hour. You shouldn't be doing that on this bike, and this bike shouldn't be capable of that. And then lastly, I personally have concerns over how Magicycle went about making their website and the fact that they kind of blatantly ripped off another slightly major player in the affordable electric fat bike space. I went and found it myself, I corresponded with the company, and I will say I don't feel like they gave me a very good explanation as to why they did that. That is not exactly a performance question, but I would know that if I was on your side of the screen, if I was the one deciding which bike I was going to spend money on, that would leave me with a bad taste in my mouth. It's just, it's not a great way of going about doing business. For those reasons and for a couple of other ones, I personally cannot recommend the Magicycle Cruiser as a good option in the affordable electric fat bike category not only because of the fact that it has issues, the ones that we've pointed out, but because there's much about this bike that is just standard. It's just normal. The price point is about normal for the affordable electric fat bike category. The battery performance is about normal. The motor size, 750 watts, is normal. The group set you're getting is normal. The brakes, especially if they do upgrade to those Tektro brakes, that's fairly normal. Again, all fairly standard issue across the board. So why would you spend your money on an e-bike that is normal but has problems when you could spend your money with another company, a more reputable company that doesn't have those problems but is going to give you the exact same component package. And to my mind, that's just a logical decision of where you should spend your money with. I'd also feel more comfortable spending my money with a company that I know was going to stand by their product, that was going to help you troubleshoot if you do have an issue, and that a bike shop might be able to recognize a little bit more if you do need to take it in for service. Service. This one, your average bike shop's not going to know who Magicycle is, and they're going to be very weary of working on it. So for those reasons, I just can't recommend the Magicycle Cruiser. But if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and like our channel for more updates of the bikes that we review and the companies that we cover. And then also be sure to click the link in the description below this video if you want to know more about the Magicycle Cruiser and the data that we collected on it through the course of our testing. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.